My best friend, I found out today, is a phone sex operator. Now, I've been best friends with, um, with this woman for almost 10 years now. And she, I knew she was doing this, and she continually asks me to do it. And I continually say no. And I don't know why she keeps asking me to do this. Um, sometimes I think that she wants some legitimacy. Uh, maybe she thinks that if I do it too, that it'll maybe give her some support in a way. That, well, I'm doing it too, so it's not so bad. She knows that I'm a staunch radical feminist. And when it comes up in conversation now, the answer I give her is really simple. I'm a radical feminist. But today she came over and we talked and she told me about what happens sometimes when she's quote unquote on the phone. Now apparently she sets her own hours. So she has a certain time that I guess she phones in and she goes live and she gets calls. And she told me that she has a few callers that will call her up and they'll they'll use they'll buy like, you know, cheap cell phones off the street in order to keep calling her. Because She's got a few customers or clients or whatever you want to call them. I call them assholes um, who call her up and will talk to her for 15 minutes, get what they want, and then start screaming at her that she's a bitch, a whore, a slut. And apparently some of these guys are pretty insistent that they do this to her so even though she blocks them they find ways around it um, she tells me that some of them will go purchase cell phones off the street just to get a new number and just put some time on it some minutes in order to get to phone her back And, you know, I always kind of, you know, I mean, I always looked at uh, this kind of phone prostitution as, you know, the lesser of um, all the, you know, the evils, right? It's the one with the least harm. But I've changed my mind because I can see when she talks about these guys, I can see in her eyes, in her gestures, that it pains her to have to hear that screamed at her continually by the same two or three guys that keep breaking through her block purposely. So I've changed my mind on that. I don't think that being on the phone with somebody and having them scream slut, whore, and all kinds of other nasty things at you after they've got what they've wanted from you, I don't think that's healthy. I don't think it's safe. I can't imagine what that could do to someone's psyche to have that happen over and over again every single week sometimes twice a week now she's been doing this now for three months that I know of and she's very bad with money she can't save money she spends it right away and I don't know how to get through to her how important it is that she stop doing this.
I think though, with some more time, she'll come to that answer on her own. But it really troubles me. It really, really troubles me. And it also reminds me of how there are pro-slavery women in this community who blame radical feminists and say, oh, you're stigmatizing us. No. No, we're not stigmatizing you. The patriarchy stigmatizes you. And we realize that. We realize the big picture. We realize that even if you decriminalize or legalize prostitution, you're still going to get Johns who are going to beat the shit out of you. You're still going to get people like Robert Picton. Because this is a fundamental sort of tenet of our society. It's, it's within the foundation of our society. And that's the thing that needs to change. We need to teach people that human beings are not sexual commodities. We have to teach respect for each other's psychological and physical boundaries when it comes to our sexuality. Just like that woman said regarding the slut walk, this kind of, you know, promiscuity does have basis in fact. Promiscuity is not healthy. That's why there are people that go to psychiatrists and psychologists because they're sex addicts. You know, there's classifications for that. Also, we live in a time where we have to worry about rampant STDs and we have to worry about HIV. So yeah, living in the society knowing that you're gambling and being promiscuous is definitely unhealthy. I think there is a fundamental part of our human psyche that's built with our sexuality. And I think that when you do activities like these, it harms you. Now I know that the pro-slavery people won't admit this. They will not admit this. I mean, they won't even admit that their beloved pornography and prostitution is inherently racist. They won't even they won't even admit that. I'm hoping that my friend will over time look to me because okay, yeah, she gets an extra couple hundred bucks every couple weeks and she spends it all. You know, it's not like she needs the money. She uh, collects the uh, Canada pension, and her husband works full time. They have been, they have, you know, everything is covered. But yet she does this. She degrades herself, and I can see it. I can see it when she's telling me about these guys. That it's just breaking her up just had to get that off my chest. Thanks for listening.